Hi, I'm Brian Antrim, one of the librarians here at Santa Monica College. Today we're going to do a database tour of a specific format database. JSTOR is all scholarly journals. Now, a thing to keep in mind about databases of scholarly journals, in order to actually get their product out to people who will buy it, um, publishers put what's called an embargo, um, which means that they don't allow the most current journal articles to be put on databases. This requires researchers to actually be members of their associations and pay for their products, which of course pays for the research. So that makes sense. But what that means is essentially JSTOR is um, back issues archive of scholarly journals beginning about a year ago to about 18 months ago and then going further back. So use this database in conjunction with other databases to get a diverse array of resources for your best research. On the college um, homepage, to get to the library, mouse over student support and click on library. Your interface may look a little different because we're going through a redesign, but the search strategy will remain the same. On the library homepage, scroll down to databases. Before we leave this page, I want to point out to you the Ask a Librarian button. This is 24-7 reference chat. Um, at any time that you need assistance, you can contact us here and we will help. So heading into the databases, All Databases gives you a list of everything that we currently subscribe to with a short description of what's in each database, and it's listed alphabetically by title. So we scroll down to JSTOR, and as you can see, it has a wide variety of topics in the humanities. So I click on that, and perhaps I'm in an art history class. And my instructor has assigned us to look for information on Caravaggio and how allegory is used in his work. So I might type in Caravaggio here, and I would check the spelling first, because <laughs> spelling, yikes. But I wouldn't immediately search. I would tell the database first what to look for. We're not interested in reviews or research reports or back matter. We're interested in articles. This is an international database, so we need them to be in English, so we and our instructor can read them. Um, and I'm going to start with that just to see what we get. Now we get over 1900 articles, which is a few too many. So I want to search within these results for allegory. Hmm, it's not letting me. If the database is being bulky, you can also do it up here. Put an AND. It doesn't have to be in capitals. I'm just showing you that so that you can see what it looks like. In parentheses, allegory. That's better. It cut out about 600 articles, but it's still a few too many. And it's given me book chapters now. So I'm going to head over to the left-hand side. And I'm going to say, I only want journal articles. Now at this point, I can go down, I can give it a publication date. If your topic is law or technology or medicine, something that changes rapidly, you'll want to go maybe three to five years. If you're looking for something that a broader perspective is fine, like philosophy or music, history or literature, art, you can go back a little further and still find really good stuff. So I'm going to limit my search to the last 15 years. And see what I get. That cuts it down considerably. So I can start searching now, or I can go down and I can limit again, this time, by subject. So I'm going to say yes. Let's look at art and art history specifically. So in essentially four limits, I've taken it down from 1900 to 155. Okay. So now I can take a look and see what I've got. Okay, so I'm going to take a look and pick um, one of these. Let's look for this. I have an option before I even click on it. I can download it, I can save it, or I can cite it. I actually recommend taking a look 
at the first page of the article before I cite it, because most journal articles you'll want to use a DOI, and if the article has a DOI, you might have to look on the first page to find it. A DOI is a digital object identifier. DOIs are specific to articles where URLs are specific to databases. So if I want to download this, I can read it. That's the only way I can read it all at once because when you click on the title, it only gives you one page at a time. I can share it, meaning I can email it to myself. Be careful if you email it to yourself because this calls on internally installed email um, software. So if you're using someone else's device or if you're sharing a device with someone, um, this may bring up their email instead of yours. You can save it. And you can cite it right over here on the left. A quick note on searching. When you're searching for journal articles, it can be a little overwhelming. So I recommend using the abstract to determine if an article is interesting enough to want to go ahead and read it, and that if it's close enough to your topic. If the abstract doesn't look like it applies to your topic, skip it and find a new article. But if the abstract looks like it does apply, you'll want to email it or download it in some way, get a hold of it so that you can use it for your research. To cite it, you click on Citation, and it gives you various options. You can copy and paste it to your paper. Make sure that you fix it before you turn it in. There are formatting issues with this. There are some problems with this particular citation. And databases never get it completely right, although this is very close. So always fix it again, so you don't lose points if the bot screws up your citation. If you want to get back to your results, click on Results. And you can find more articles on your topic. If you have any questions, ask a librarian. Good luck with your search, and be well.